Ladies and gentlemen, guys and dolls, cats and chicks, you're listening to Viva ENT. This is your host, Johnny the Capo. And um, with me today is the guy that actually uh, produced the, the session on Such a Rush, the uh, our theme song. Uh, Mr. Mike Beck, say hello to Seattle. That's right. Hello, Seattle. It's good to be back. He's back, Jack, and that's a fact. And, of course, my regular co-host, Mr. Devin the DJ. Devin the DJ, and of course the greatest producer in all of Seattle, Mr. Hey, it's Eric. CC Rider! All right. Yeah. I think we nailed it, did we? I think so. It yeah. was a good one. <laughs> good. Okay, so uh, last show uh, we had the Hammond Brothers on, and you know, we got a lot of. A lot of uh, response on, on the group uh, with the Hammond Brothers. They have a lot of fans. And they got a lot of great songs, too. A lot of great songs, and they, they did a... Uh, nice guys. Nice guys. And, 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 and our... And, oh, by the way, I want to tell our listeners that our group, Viva ENT Talk Radio Rock Pop and Soul, over 900 members now. Wow. Yeah. What an accomplishment. We're probably 902, 903 as we speak. Yeah. But uh, 900, headed to 1,000. And, and and we've done that kind of pretty much less than a year. Yeah, and I got yeah. 98 subscribers on my channel as well. So well, well, great. I think I got about 17 or 18. I, I got to build that up. But um, we got a lot of things going on uh, with the, the show today. Oh, we're featuring the year 1980. Yep, part two. Part two. Yep. And, and, and the number one song of 1980 was Call Me yep. by Blondie, which, you know, I can, I, can, I can understand it. I dig it. There's no question it uh, it was it got you know it was such a huge hit. Great song, great band. And, and where are we now, uh, uh, Eric? Are we like number nine or something? Or? Well, we left off at number nine. Uh, it's still rock and roll to me by Billy Joel. Uh, so at number ten uh, in 1980, top hits of 1980, uh, The Rose mm -hmm. from oh, Bette yeah. Midler. Bette Miller. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from a movie. Yeah. Mm hmm. Big hit. It was one of those songs. She did a good job on it. I got to say, uh, the title, The Rose, wasn't jogging my memory, but as soon as yeah. you hear that opening line, you yeah. know exactly who it is and uh, and know the song for sure. Yeah, you would think it would be another title. Yeah. <laughs> Makes you think of Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah? That's the song was in it. First. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, cool. Now, of course, Bette Midler has had, you know, a, a phenomenal, a phenomenal career. I mean, everything from, you know, The Rose to Wind Beneath My Wings and tons and tons of movies. Yeah. She didn't have a lot of a chart success uh, 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 other than what you just said. Uh, uh, she wasn't like, a, a, you know, a top in the charts all the time. Well, Which, I think her albums did pretty well. Okay. Very good. Um, Including her soundtracks. <laughs> her soundtracks did really yeah. well, yeah. So, anyway, uh, I remember the song, you know, uh, it was a big hit, smash hit. You know, it was one of those songs that you, you can't say a, a bad word about. What about you, Mike? you remember that tune? I remember the tune playing, <laughs> uh, actually, DJ and Weddings mm -hmm. for you, mm -hmm. Johnny. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, I yeah. DJed tons of weddings for you. Yeah. And that was one of the songs that was requested. I think I played it on a first dance. Yeah. One it, or two times. As soon as this yeah. COVID's over, you'll be DJing lots of weddings again. Yep. Mm hmm. Devin, what, what, you, uh, what you input on that great, tune? Great slow song. Or, yeah. Um, I think that she's probably, uh, of all the success that she had, I think she's probably a little underrated as a singer. You know, she really incredible. She could be like yeah. Barbara Streisand, like, right? Yeah, exactly. Like like she does really. get requested though at weddings. Oh yeah, and that, you know, I'd say yeah. one out of five or six weddings. Yeah. I, no, one out of maybe yeah six to eight. Let's say six to eight weddings. Cool, cool, cool. cool. I'll get a, a request for the rose. Beth Midler, yeah. Not so much the rose, but 
sometimes okay. one of our songs. Okay. Yeah. I'd, I'd say Barbra Streisand, uh, Streisand is probably the most uh, comparable right. Um, right, person right. Uh, out there to um, Bette Miller because as someone that is equally well-known as an actress, as a, a singer, and also known for having a soaring voice, um, and also known for it kind of existing outside of the pop music world, but still having pop success, you know? Yeah. There's not that many figures like that. Right. Like Bette Midler and Barbara Streisand are probably the only ones I can really think of. That's that exactly. Kind of fall into that. Exactly yeah. what I was trying to get at. Uh, you know, uh, uh, they uh, even they weren't really, you know, uh, really recognizable by having a lot of hits on the radio, but when they did, um, it was it was, you know, big, big mm. thing. Number well, 10 song of the year. Uh, well, number 11 song of the year is Escape, otherwise known as the Pina Colada song oh, by yeah, Rupert yeah. Holmes. Oh, my God. They played the hell out of this. Yeah, this is another one I think of as being a 70s song more than an 80s song, you know. It's, but, it's uh, right on a cusp. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't born yet. <laughs> Two more years and I was born. <laughs> but you know this song for sure. Everybody knows this song. Yep. yep. Oh, yeah. Still hear it in the supermarket to this day. Mm. <laughs> I think I have this on vinyl, actually. Oh, wow. <laughs> you, like you know, it still works for uh, kid shows. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Kids love pina coladas. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't know what it means yet at that point. Right? right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was a big hit. This Rupert Holmes only success, kind of no a one hit wonder. Uh, but uh, what a huge song, and kind of set him up for life. That's that's what um, what I mean. You know, having a hit is a big thing, even if you only have one. You know, and this guy only had one big hit, and he did have a follow up called him that did pretty well. But uh, you know, clearly. Not as well as Escape the Pina Colada song, and I don't, yeah. I don't recall ever hearing him in my life. <laughs> yeah, likewise, unless it was on a gospel album. <laughs> I shot the stardom. The, yeah, that was 1980 though. A lot of, a lot of changes from uh, the disco. Uh, disco is not as much on this list. As it right. It's, yeah, it's absolutely. Start, it's starting to uh, change. You know, uh, by 1980, uh, disco was pretty much we had enough. Getting into the hair bands, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. just the beginning. Yeah, yeah I, I think so. I think it was the beginning of that stuff, and mm -hmm. I liked it. People driving their cars, like the number 12 song, Cars by Ooh. Gary Newman. Oh, yeah. Now, this song, truly a groundbreaking tune, you know, really brought electronic music into the mainstream. I think so. Yeah. And yeah, Gary Newman had success uh, with a band called Tube Way Army uh, before he went solo and uh, scored a few hits in the UK. But this one is really the only one that made a big impression in the United States. But still, to this day, big very hit. well known. Big hit. Mm -hmm. Very well known. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, of course, the video got tons of airplay mm -hmm. uh, on uh, MTV in the early days, for sure. There wasn't that many videos around, so the ones that were got quite a lot of airplay, and this was one of them. That's right. And I like the song. I, I, how can you not like the song? Yeah, it's great. It's cool. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a cool tune, and... When you say you, you said electronic music, or what you yeah, call that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, what's what, what, what's the definition of, of that? Is electronic music? Is it? Well, this uh, song is uh, pretty much all synthesizers, and, rather than you know guitar, drums, bass, right? And, 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 and maybe done on computer. Yeah, but very primitive computers. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. all synthesized sounds. Um, so. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, before the time of MIDI. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. Sorry, I, I, about when, three years prior. I know many. Yeah, maybe four. I, it, they had the beta versions in the 83. Yeah, 84 was kind of went mainstream. I knew all about many in the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of cool. 
Okay, so where are we now, Dev? Well, we're on to uh, number 13, Cruising by Smokey Robinson. Okay, yeah. The only thing I, I didn't like about, I love the song, but the movie. Oh, I like that the songs go from cars to cruising. Cars yeah. Cruising. <laughs> in we're the cruising. list. We're, we're a lot of time in cars back then. We're cruising, That's right. Man. Wait in yeah. line for gas. Uh-huh. Smokey at his best, I gotta tell you. Of course, legendary singer, a huge Absolutely. success in the 60s with the Miracles, one of the cornerstones of the Motown sound. Yep. All the above. Smooth as silk. That's Smokey Robinson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is not a one night stand. Yeah. I gotta tell you my Smokey Robinson story. I seen him uh, live at, at Caesar's Palace in the showroom, and it was the first time that uh, uh, you had a band with mostly strings wow. instead of horns. He had horns, but the strings. Sounded so fantastic in his show that they all to me it sounded like horns because they were just so well, um, uh, I don't know, written, I don't know what the word is, but arranged, uh, probably, well, yeah. It, 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 it sounded directed, it, it, or, it, sounded, it sounded like horns to me. They were so well placed at the strings, and and um, it was actually real strings like uh, violins and things like that. Mm. And it was, it was, I'll never forget that show. He looked great in that show, and Sing, sing like a king, and and uh, but I'll never forget the fact that I don't ever think I seen a show in Vegas with so many strings. They had a string. You know, good had acoustics a, in the venue, like oh, a whole yeah. orchestra or uh, like a uh, quartet. Uh, uh, more, I would say more of, of an ensemble of strings. Okay, nice. yeah, cool. And it, it was fabulous. It, it was. It, I I'll never forget it. But you know, Smokey Robinson is is, is a genius, and his voice is magical and. What can you say about the guy? Yeah, absolutely. A total legend. Mm -hmm. And speaking of legends and speaking of soulful legends, you know, the next song, Working My Way Back to You from the Spinners, sometimes known as the Detroit Spinners, uh, you know, another classic tune. Right. Love them. So where do they get their name, the Spinners? Because, you know, one time I was in a gym, right? And uh, I, after my workout, I'm about ready to leave. And I'm standing there. There's a few other ladies talking. And they're talking about spinning. They're like, yeah, I spin, I spin. I'm like, yeah, I spin too. They're like, oh, yeah, you do? It's like, it's yeah. It's a different kind of spinning. And I'm like, yeah, so I... I spin records. Uh, I, us I usually spin some electronic music. And what what do you ladies spin? And they just start busting out laughing, right? <laughs> and they're like, "No, we spin on like the bikes oh. in at the gym, right?" Bike, <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh, this is just disconnection right there." Yeah. Well, Where'd they get their name? The Spinners. Do well, you know that? Maybe from records spinning around. Yeah, uh, that's that's the that was the first thing that came to my mind was yeah. the record spinning around. Well, often known as the uh, Detroit uh, Spinners, as I said, or sometimes the Motown Spinners, because there was a UK band called the Spinners. So okay. to avoid uh, confusion over there, they got those nicknames. Uh, but yeah, a great uh, soul group, uh, great Motown sound. Uh, band and uh, working my way back to you, of course, one of their biggest hits. Yeah, and you know, they did another big hit uh, that the Four Seasons did. Uh, it was uh, Let's Hang On, I think. Or was it that song? I'm starting to think it was that song. I might be mistaken on that one. 
or spinning like the uh, Detroit spinners. There's wheels. Mm-hmm. Another car theme car song. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. It was a, it was yeah. it was a car theme year. <laughs> <laughs> there you yeah. go. Uh, what's what's next? Uh, number fifteen is "Lost in Love" by Air Supply. Okay. Um, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it was Cle- uh, you know, clearly not that big of a fan of <laughs> Air Supply, and I I can't say I, I blame I, you. I they were ubiquitous at the time. They right huge huge hits, but uh, they did not my favorite either. Right, yeah, so uh, very easy listening. That's a little bit hard to listen. A little to. too <laughs> easy listening for a guy. Maybe I mean maybe, maybe I hope I don't want to. Girls like this song, I think better. A lot of people like this song, yeah. Uh, which is why it was such a big hit, and why Air Supply Probably. still tours to this day. I've seen them. Yeah, and does well, but uh, yeah, it's a duo. It's two guys, right, for the most yeah, part. Yeah, so they're a duo. Yeah, I think you're right. Kind of like elevator music or something. <laughs> kind of reminds me of America back in. Uh, yeah, soft rock was yeah. very, very big in the. Uh, 70s and early 80s. <laughs> it's pretty soft. Yeah, yeah. Now these guys were uh, Australian. Oh wow! Da-da-da. Started in Melbourne. All right. But it's interesting. You really don't hear any Australianness in their music at all. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know no. that. No. no. Where's the didgeridoo? <laughs> well, that too, yeah. And, then, yeah. and the accents are, you know, it's funny how you know, people can talk with very thick accents. And then when they sing a song, sometimes it's just <laughs> it's incredible. clear as a bell. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. Yeah, 1980, that was the year uh, the Dingo Ate My Baby. That was, uh, no kidding. Uh, <laughs> Dingo that's, ate a, my... that's a whole other story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, that was uh, a famous uh, movie wasn't it? There was a quote from a, a famous movie at the oh, time. Oh, uh, that that was a news story too. Like when, yeah, when CNN uh, happened, uh, that was 1980 in June. Oh wow! Started oh, yeah. up, so I had no idea. Yeah, a lot of you, changes this year. You, yeah, a uh, lot of changes. Do you have a list of some of the highlights of 1980? I do. I have some facts. Why don't you, uh, why don't you go ahead and lay, lay them on us? Like starting off in uh, January, Paul McCartney is arrested in Tokyo. Oh for yeah, possession of um, I remember that marijuana. Oh wow! The reigning part of Paul McCartney's and Wings tour was canceled. Yep, I remember that. It was a big thing. And uh, yeah, uh, they used that experience to inspire the song "Band on the Run." That's correct. Yep, which uh, talks about it being in jail basically, hey, and then <laughs> band on the run. and then being on the run. Yeah, afterwards. Yep, the Jane That's a good man. Song. <laughs> yeah. uh, he was released nine days later. And, uh, no, okay, wow. he must. He must have went. He went. He must have started That's writing. Good like, lawyer. Really quick. Yeah. Yeah, how much money did it take to bail him out? I don't know. <laughs> probably quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, Japan, uh, I, at, at least at the time, did not play around with drug possession. Uh, they they were very strict. Yeah, I, I think they kind of let him go because they just didn't want the publicity. So they just kind of. I think they might have just released him, said you're out of the country. I think he was banned at the, from the country at the moment. Yeah, I, I don't think he ever came back. Yeah. Um, uh, February 7th, Pink Floyd's The Wall Tour opens Ooh. up in Los Angeles uh, oh, Memorial Sports Arena. Big stuff, man. Yeah. yeah. Big, love The Wall. Me yeah, too. Yeah, big stuff. Big uh, real big. April 13th, the Broadway musical Grease closes its run of 3,388 performances, yeah. making it the longest running show on Broadway up to that time. Yeah, and Grease came out in 78, was that? Or yeah. Seven, yeah, 77. 78, if we can. 78, I think. Yeah, yeah that, was, that, that was phenomenal, for, uh, uh, everything about it. Yeah, the movie, the the play, the run, and, you know they probably had five or six different companies out, uh, you know one in L.A., one in London, one in New York, or one in Chicago. It was huge. Yep. Speaking of uh, other huge bands, uh, April twenty fifth, uh, Black Sabbath releases Heaven and Hell, their first album to feature Ronnie James Dio on vocals. No kidding. Oh, wow. Ronnie, oh, you mean uh, uh, minus uh, the man? Yeah. Oh. Mm. Yeah, they they changed the. That's good to know. I, that 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 I didn't know. And uh, the t- June twenty fifth, the Sony Walkman goes on sale in the United States. I remember that. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that changes everything. Sure does. Definitely, yeah. definitely remember that. And uh, September thirteenth, Alton John plays a free concert for four hundred thousand people in New York Central Park. He performs an encore as Don- in a Donald Duck costume. I I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I posted that uh, concert. That was the Viva people have E&T, seen uh, definitely seen the clips of that. And speaking of Elton John, 
He had the number 16 hit of the year with Little Genie. Yeah, I remember it vaguely. She got so much love. Yeah, I posted the uh, Alton John concert on the group today. Cool. So I see you when I can. You make me all a man can be. And I want you to be my acrobat. I want you to be my lover. Oh, Who would treat you cruel? And oh, Gina. Yeah. It was a. Uh... Easy listening type thing. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't remember. I remember the song, but um, it wasn't one of those songs that overtook the airwaves at the time. It right, was right. Kind of a song. Uh, obviously a huge hit, but uh, right. I think with all the hits that Elton John had, right. you know, this is a, a lesser known one. And I agree. Maybe lesser revered hit. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, well, well said, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. it was the highest for him on uh, this year for the charts. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, uh, he, he, uh, he his his heydays were kind of uh, maybe. I think he lasted for the decade. Didn't yeah, it? he's a big star. There's no question about it. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, um, another great song is "Ride Like the Wind" by Christopher. Oh Frost. yeah, yeah, 17. he had a lot of fans. Number seventeen. Yeah, this song was huge when yes. I was a kid, all still, over the radio. Still is. Of course, uh, Christopher Cross is sometimes considered a one-hit wonder, but he wasn't. He no, had, no, he had, he had multiple hits, had. like uh, Ride Like the Wind, of course, but also Sailing, which was his biggest hit. And uh, the theme from Arthur was a, a massive song for him, too, a little bit later. Yeah, he didn't he get an Academy Award for that? I think he might have. Yeah, for best song. and Actually, that was eight, 1981, so... This was when he got just, the, uh, the award. Yeah, when he got the award, it was 1981. Yeah, cool. Yeah, he was a uh, quite... yeah best that you can do was 81, and no doubt we'll be talking about that when we cover 81 because that was a huge, huge song. Yeah, this song, um, and Christopher Cross as an artist just got um, this um, immediate um, attention as being a great artist. You know, there was not like a. Uh, he's this or he's that, but everybody liked the music and everybody was cool with him. I think mm-hmm. it didn't hurt to have uh, his debut single, Right Like the Wind, have Michael McDonald right. uh, contributing vocals Some, as well. Something going on there, that's for sure. Yeah. The arrangement, the whole nine yards, the horns, they they had a hit there for sure. They sure Bow. did. Oh, yeah. The earworm. Bow. But in a good way. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, everybody still digs the, the tunes that he, he put out. should put that as a wake-up alarm. That would be a good song, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so number 18 is Upside Down, uh, yeah, Diana Yeah, speaking Ross. of earworms. I said upside down, oh, yeah. me, love and Disco's not I'm dead. Yeah, it was on its last legs in 1980, but still scored some big hits, including this one. Yep. Yeah, nice. Diana was one of my favorite female vocalists when I was started out as a kid listening to music, and nice to see her have a hit in the 80s. But you can hear the sound evolving, uh, you know, going from straight up disco to maybe a little more dance pop yeah. sound here. Yep. Yeah, you're right about that. It's not really disco. No question about it. And just like, you know, Smokey Robinson had solo success after leading, leaving the Miracles, uh, Diana Ross had huge success after right. going solo, after being in the Supremes and scoring so many yeah. huge hits, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised that uh, she uh, didn't make more movies, and uh, I'm, just, I'm just shocked that uh, uh, her movie career didn't uh, go further than it did, because... She hit like a splash with Lady Sings the Blues. Yeah. Then she made a follow-up movie called Mahogany. 
Right. Didn't do so well. Mm. Of course, she was in The Wiz, too. Yeah, but, with Michael Jackson. But for some reason, uh, her, her movie career didn't take off. It's weird. Yeah, and, you know, her solo success kind of dried up a little bit later into the 80s. But uh, yeah. as far as 1980 goes, she was a, a superstar. Well, for her to go from 64 to in, in the 80s is, is, is fabulous yeah. as it is. Yeah, that's well, a decent career for yeah, sure. A 20-year career? I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody has a 20-year career, really. <laughs> no. Few people do, but uh, hey, you know, we're already time for a break. It goes so cool. fast when we're talking about all this great music. I love it. What, what are we going out with? Um, well, why don't we uh, continue a little more of Upside Down? We'll come back with Casey and the Sunshine Band. I like Speaking it. of disco. Yeah. You're listening please, to Viva yeah. here. Tea. Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. Please don't go. Please, baby, please don't go. Please don't go.